putting up the first functional wireless LAN. It's important to see the fruits of our labor. In this video, we're going to take a look at actually getting a client onto a network that we created together. Let's begin. One of the key factors in keeping us motivated as we're learning something new is the feeling and the knowledge that we're getting better and better. We're improving every single time that we study or practice. In our journey, we've done a lot of really cool things and we've learned a lot of cool things. However, we really haven't seen a wireless network that we've created in action yet. We've set up the switch, we set up the controller, we plugged in the APs, but we're still not yet using a wireless network. Are you with me? So what I want to do in this video is for you and I to take a couple of additional steps into actually having a functional wireless network using the controller and seeing it function. And that'll be our primary objective for this specific nugget. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take one of these access points, which is currently connected inside of VLAN 20, and we'll give it a friendly name like AP1 or something else that we can really easily identify. Then we can create a brand new wireless local area network. And we can name it, for example, wireless local area network 30 or 40 or 50 or whatever SSID name we want to give to it. And we can also logically associate this wireless local area network with the wired VLAN 30. To do that, we're going to create a new logical interface on the controller. It's sort of like a switched virtual interface for a multi-layer switch. It's very similar in function. On this wireless LAN controller, we can create a virtual interface called wireless LAN 30. We can specify what the 802.1Q tag should be as traffic is being forwarded on the Ethernet network side. We can give this wireless LAN 30 a logical IP address space from the 30 subnet. So let's say 172.16.30. Let's use three because the default gateway is one and there's a switch virtual interface in that space using dot two. So let's use dot three. And then when we turn on this new wireless local area network, we just associate it with this logical interface. And we now have a wireless extension of the wired VLAN 30. Now it's pretty tough for a controller to do a good job of wireless network management if it doesn't have any access points that have connected to it. So the first thing we want to do is just verify that at least one access point using CapWAP has associated itself with this controller. And here on the monitor page for the controller, if we scroll down a little bit, I see that we have one access point that has connected and it is currently up. So that's a good sign. We can also verify that access points have connected and are working with the controller at the command line as well. In fact, if we wanted to SSH into the controller for a command line interface, what we could do is go to management. And under management, if we go to telnet and SSH, by default, SSH is being allowed and telnet is not. And that's a pretty good policy, by the way. There's not too many good reasons you'd want to open up telnet on a production network. So if we want to have a console interface, a command line interface, and not do it through ESX, through VMware, we can simply SSH over. Currently, I'm connected to a router. If we want to open up a new SSH session to the controller, all we need to do is go to File. This is using Secure CRT. The process would be very similar in PuTTY or some other SSH application. I'm going to select Quick Connect. We'll put in the IP address, put in the username we want to connect as. We'll click on Connect. Now, the very first time we connect, it's going to ask us about a new host key. We haven't connected this device before. If we want to accept and save it, it won't prompt us for that again. And now we can log in as admin with our password of ABC123 with the dollar sign. And now we're in. So if we wanted to validate what access points have currently connected to us through CapWAP, we can simply issue the command show AP summary press enter, and that'll provide us the detail. So here I've got this access point that I took the liberty of naming, by the way, AP1. I'll show you how to do that if you want to in just a moment. It's an 1131 AG. There's its Ethernet MAC address. It'll also have MAC addresses associated with its radios. But that's not a bad command right there. Just to validate from the command line that you've got some access points that are connected if you don't have the GUI up. If you want to name your APs, which is not a bad idea, we could do that by simply going to Monitor, and then scrolling down and saying, I want to see the details for all of my APs. I have one whopping AP at the moment. And then simply clicking on it right here, the AP name, there's a link. And if we want to change that to AP 11 or AP 12 or AP whatever, or build in some information based on what floor it's on and what area it's in, you can do that right here. Once you put that in, simply click on apply. I've also said on this same page regarding this access point that the AP mode I want to put it in is Flex Connect. We'll cover more detail on Flex Connect in another nugget. 
But the basics of Flex Connect is that it does allow switching and forwarding of frames without having to send all that traffic up to the controller. So with this 1131 access point, I'm gonna choose Flex Connect because it's supported on that access point. And if we made any changes here, we wanna make sure we apply those changes right here with this button. And if you want this to reboot with those changes, sort of like doing a copy run to start on a Cisco iOS router, we'd wanna go ahead and save that configuration right here. And that's just giving us a little heads up on what it's going to do. Sometimes it scares people when they see the word reboot, but all it's doing is saying, hey, when you do, or if you do reboot the controller, the save that you're doing right now is gonna cause the information to still be there when you reboot, which is great. So we'll click on okay, and we'll dismiss the confirmation page. I think it was Abraham Lincoln who once said that if you have seven hours to cut down a tree, you ought to spend six hours of that time sharpening the ax, or in other words, plan ahead. So with our new wireless local area network that we're gonna create, let's go ahead and call it WLAN30. Let's create a new logical interface on the controller. We can call it WLAN30. Again, the name doesn't have to match. We'll also specify that WLAN30 is going to be using VLAN30 and also an IP address of 172.16.30. That's this subnet right down here, dot zero. That's the subnet. And we'll go ahead and give it the IP address of dot three. So that'll be our plan. The default gateway for that VLAN as well as the DHCP server is gonna be at dot one. The other thing we had a plan for is what frequencies are we gonna use? Do you wanna use the 2.4 gigahertz range or the five gigahertz range? And it really depends on what else is in the air at the place we're gonna deploy this. So what you and I are gonna do right now is we're gonna do a really quick and easy site survey to see what channels are already in use. And then we'll make a decision based on what's there on what frequencies we should use. Now in a production environment, you and I would map out all the locations where potential computers would be and make sure that we understand exactly the coverage ranges based on the antenna types and how many APs we're gonna have. But for now, I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna run into anything and walk on top of somebody. So let's go ahead and sort this based on the RSSI right here. And I'll put the strongest ones on the top. So let me get out my pen tool for just a moment. It looks like we have a whole bunch of busyness all in the 2.4 gigahertz space. So just so I don't walk on top of somebody else, which is very easy to do. We turn on some radios and we're in this 2.4 gigahertz space. There's really nowhere I can land that I won't be causing some type of interference for them or me. So let's go ahead and leave the 2.4 gigahertz space and let's go ahead in the five gigahertz range, which we can do with 802.11a. And the 1130 ones that I have, the access points support B, A, and G. So there's no problem in going up to the five gigahertz range if we use A. And that concludes our site survey. So if we look at the details in the five gigahertz range, we've got this guy right here that's using channels 36 and 40 and this one right here, which is using channels 149 and 153. So all the other space up there is wide open. Fantastic. So back at the controller, let's go up to controller and then go to interfaces. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a brand new logical interface. Think of this like an SVI, a switched virtual interface on a switch, except this is a logical interface on the controller. So it currently is showing us our management interface on VLAN 10, the service port, which has the address of 192.168.1.185. Also, by the way, for this service port, if we want to access it from a non-local subnet, we are going to have to add static routes to the remote networks we wanna reach it from. So right now, we are connected to this IP address, 192.168.1.185, but it's only because my computer is also on that same subnet. So that's just one caveat with the service port I wanted you to be aware of is that there's no concept of a default gateway when it comes to the service port. We need to add static routes. So for example, if my management computer was at 10.12.13.5, I would have to add a static route that included the next hop to go ahead and reach my IP address because the 10 is definitely not on the same local network that the service port is configured for. So we can add network routes right here as well. All right, now having said that, let's go ahead and create a brand new logical interface that we're gonna associate with our new wireless local area network. And to do that, under interfaces, in the upper right-hand corner, we have this beautiful button called new. We simply click on it. So this doesn't have to match what your wireless local area network is gonna be, the SSID. Let's call it VLAN-30. That way when we see this logical interface, we'll realize, oh, that's the logical interface for VLAN-30. And the VLAN identifier is gonna be the .1Q tag of 30. 
just like that. Now when we click on apply, it's gonna take us to more details of this newly created interface. So all we need to add to get this functional is we have the VLAN identifier, it's already filled in, it's 30. Let's give it the IP address for this virtual interface, which is gonna be 172.16.30.3, we agreed to. And let's go ahead and put our mask in. And the default gateway for this subnet, which is 172.16.30.1, which is the router with one of its sub interfaces. If we scroll down a little bit further, we have the primary DHCP server. Now, the reason this becomes important is because when clients connect to the wireless network that we're going to associate with this interface, they are going to need an IP address. If you want to hand out an IP address, there's really two ways of doing it. One, on some controllers, you can configure a DHCP pool right on the controller. And the other option is to go ahead and point to a valid DHCP server that is handing out IP addresses. So what we're gonna do is do 172.16.30.1. That is a very busy router. He's acting as the DHCP server. He's the default gateway. He's an NTP server. He's got a lot going on and he's happy to serve. And that's really all the basics we need for this virtual interface. Now to apply this, we're gonna scroll back to the top and click apply. And we have a little warning saying that changing any of the parameters for an existing wireless local area network that's associated with this interface may cause a temporary disruption. That's no biggie for us because it's not actually a wireless network yet. It will be here in just a moment. So we'll click on OK. I'm also a big fan of saving our work as we go. So if something terrible happened and the system rebooted, we want to make sure it comes up with at least the work that we've input so far. So we'll save our configuration, click OK. And now let's go ahead and create our brand new wireless local area network that we're going to associate with VLAN 30. So we'll go to wireless local area networks. This wireless local area network called our SSID was from that setup script that we ran. I took the liberty of disabling that. I didn't want it coming up. So that as we bring up a brand new wireless local area network, it'll be exactly as we asked for it. So to create a brand new wireless local area network, we simply click on go for create new. And it's asking what type we want to create a wireless local area network. It's asking for a profile name. I'll call it our profile for now. More to come on that. And the SSID, let's call this wireless local area network dash 30. That way when we see it, we can think, oh, okay, wireless LAN 30 is associated with the VLAN 30 logical interface on the controller that's mapped to VLAN 30 on the wired side. And this idea is simply referring to the number of wireless local area networks that are configured. So we had the one from the setup script, and this is going to be our second wireless network. So we'll click on apply. And when we click on apply, we want to do a couple things. Number one, on the general tab here, we want to click on enabled. If you want the wireless local area network enabled, which we do. Also the radio policy right here, you can say, you know what? I want A and G or just G or just B and G. And we're going to go A only. And that'll put us up in that five gigahertz range. So we don't bother anybody in the 2.4 gigahertz range, which based on the insider information that we just looked at, is completely crowded space. So we're gonna go ahead and do 802.11a only and stay clear of all those guys down at 2.4 gigahertz. And check this out. This is where we're going to associate our VLAN 30 logical interface, which includes all the details that clients who connect to that wireless network are gonna need. For example, a DHCP server so they can get an IP address along with the default gateway. Now the other thing that could stop our success is if we have authentication that we can't get through. I've got separate nuggets for you just on authentication. So for now, as a temporary display of functionality, let's go up to security. And for layer two security, we're gonna say, you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and use none, which means anybody can associate, authenticate without providing any credentials whatsoever and be connected to our wireless local area network. In a production environment, that wouldn't be a good thing except for perhaps a guest network. But for now, I just want to demonstrate getting this up and running. So with those in place, we'll go ahead and click on apply. That was regarding the security tab. I'm going to click apply again regarding the general tab. And I'm going to click on OK, recognizing that if I make some changes, if there's a production wireless local area network in place, I may cause some temporary interruption of that service. So I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and save so that when this thing reboots, the configuration that we just created will still be there. So the cool thing is the controller has communicated that information out to the radio. In this case, when we have one, it's access point one. And in just a few moments, that SSID, wireless LAN 30, is now going to be available and people can connect to it without any type of authentication whatsoever. 
the steps we took to get there, we named our AP, which is not required, but a nice thing to have. We set the mode. We created that new logical interface on the controller. We said this belongs to VLAN 30, gave it an IP address in that VLAN. We created a new wireless local area network, gave it an SSID, associated it with that interface. And the last step that we have now is to go ahead and connect and test this out just to verify that it works. So let's take a look at Insider. Now the good news is, is that our wireless local area network is showing up. There's WLAN 30. I haven't sorted based on the SSID. So W is at the very bottom. It's also highlighted right here. So check this out. It says 802.11. We're using 802.11a. So this guy right next to it, that's 802.11n using the five gigahertz range, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and connect to this. So let me close Insider. And let's use something really simple to go ahead and connect. And I'm thinking we could just use an iPhone. So to do that, I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to click on Wi-Fi. And when I click on Wi-Fi, lo and behold, in my list of potential networks I can connect to, there is WLAN 30. So I'll go ahead and connect by touching it. I get a little check mark next to WLAN 30. And let's verify if I can ping something. So I'm going to open up a little app called Ping. And let's ping 172.16.30.1. So even though I'm in this wireless local area network here, the controller is linking that to VLAN 30. And I should be able to ping my default gateway on VLAN 30. So I click on Start. And sure enough, I've got pings that are flying no problem. I'll click on Stop. Let me clear it. And let's try one more thing. So logically, I'm in this network that's logically part of VLAN 30 on the wired side. And I believe routing is all set up. Let's just see if I can ping my computer. I've got a host computer here. It's 192.168.1. something. <laughs> Let's find out what that is together. So let me bring in a command prompt real quick. We'll do an IP config. And it's 1.47. So let's verify that we can ping 147 from our wireless client. So a ping of 192.168.1.47. We'll click on start. And sure enough, those pings are working. And I'll go ahead and stop that as well. One other really important aspect that I want to point out right off the bat is that from the controller, if we want to see which clients are currently connected to our wireless networks, that is very easy to determine. In the GUI, we simply go to monitor. On the left-hand side, click on clients. And it will show us exactly who's connected. So we can scroll right and see more details regarding that as well. So this MAC address here is the MAC address of my iPhone. And if we click on that, it'll give us additional details regarding our current connection. In this video, we put a couple of additional pieces in place, including a virtual interface for the controller and a brand new wireless local area network. So we could have proof of concept for a functional wireless local area network. I am glad you joined me. I appreciate the time. I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.